Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint this cardinal, but I wanted to show you my first attempt. This guy here who looks a little angry was my first try and I was very frustrated with it, so I started again. But then sometimes when you look at a painting um, afterwards, after like the next day, it looks better. And that was the case with this, but I still decided to go with my second attempt and uh, that's what you can see me sketching on here. Now, I'm sketching indirectly with a Prismacolor wax base color pencil because I wanted my lines to stay fresh and free and permanent. I just use some basic shapes to sketch on this cardinal. Um, ovals for the body and head, a pointy shape for the top of the head and the mask and the beak. And you know, that's pretty much all there is to it. I just tried to put very loose, sketchy, yet accurate lines. Uh, I think it's sometimes a fun exercise to, uh, to just go in and sketch with a colored pencil right on your watercolor paper and let the lines fall where they may. Now I'm flicking on water because I want a very loose background and I'm using some very inexpensive watercolors from Joy Art and I will link to those as well as the other products I used in the video description. I am adding in colors here and there. I've got a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt umber, some yellow ochre, got a little bit of cerulean blue there. I'm basically just um, putting in a bunch of colors and letting them kind of mix and mingle on the background. When I do this in a sketchbook that I haven't like tape down the edges to, I get a really awesome like kind of raw border and I think it's really pretty in a sketchbook. Now if you get some colors you don't want on the bird's body, you can simply blot them away with the paper towel. I also like to flick and dab in colors um, and just kind of let them muddle into what I have in the background. I think it helps it look like there's a lot of depth to the scene and it kind of gives you that like a further away out of focus um, look. So it just looks like it has a little more, little more depth and perspective. And I'm flicking on some red for berries in the background. I did paint some red right on the bird. Just make sure you blot um, if the paint whooshes out into the background too much. This is just an overall setting the tone for the painting. I like to encourage blending on my um, paper by tipping the sketchbook around and just letting those colors puddle and muddle around. And then you end up with some very interesting mixes and some interesting textures as the more granulating colors just kind of settle out. I did blot up any puddles so that way I wouldn't have any backgrounds where I don't want it. And while the paper's still damp, I sketched in the branch with a synthetic brush and some fairly concentrated burnt umber. You don't want too much water on your brush for this, otherwise you're gonna get a really puddly mess. And and then I let it dry at this point so then I can go back in with some more details. So now that it's all dry, I grabbed my colored pencils again and this time I used a golden yellow to kind of start to put in the beak. I realized that this paper was pretty rough and rougher than the, um, the paper I used for that other cardinal I showed you. So I decided to go in with the paint. It, the colored pencil was not filling in the tooth of the paper enough. So my color was looking real patchy. So I just went in um, with my watercolor paints and a tip when you're using less expensive paints is to work straight from the tube or you know just put out a little a little dab on your palette it can dry out and you can reuse it but I find that if I work with the paint still moist I get um, a much better result from student grade paints so that's just a little tip for you if you are struggling with uh, maybe your paints not being vibrant enough I mixed a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue with that uh, beautiful vermilion red and I made a nice dark with that and that's how I'm putting in the shading colors. Now the um, you'll notice like the tail it definitely has more of a you know darker muted tone it's almost like a purpley gray uh, as does the underside of the feathers so I just wanted to go in and grab that right off the bat. The belly is warmer and brighter, so I went right in with my yellow ochre to kind of boost that color. And um, I'm just adding some kind of red details into the tail and letting it blend into what I've already got painted there. So I'm working wet on dry for this bird because um, I want to keep my colors really intense. And with watercolor, if you go wet into wet, your colors can shift quite a bit. And I didn't want to build up a ton of layers with this. I wanted to be much more direct. And I'm also going to be doing mixed media with colored pencils. So I really just kind of want a good, accurate, bright base color there. And as you can see, I repainted the branch. And this brush I'm using is a number six round. Um, it's like a no-name brand though. I don't know who makes it, um, but it works really well for this technique. Um, and then what I'm doing here is I am painting really watery in with one color and then dripping the next color in. So um, like I'm using sap green, really, really watery. I'm painting in the, the uh, kind of boughs here, these uh, fur 
bows, and then I'm dripping in some Prussian blue and just letting those colors mingle. I think that's a great way when you're painting something that's alive, like a branch, it's a great way to make it feel alive, make it feel lively. Because when you look at something in nature, you will see a variance in colors. So the, you saw I had that little uh, drying tool out. Uh, the reason I had that out was because I had to dry the tail because I tried to paint over that and the tail was wet. All of those you know, those branches would be fuzzy and it would just kind of seep into the tail and not look crisp and realistic. And I'm using the term realistic uh, fairly loosely here because I'm definitely just trying to be expressive and have a good time with this painting. I find that working in a watercolor sketchbook is just more freeing than like um, stretching my paper or working on a block of expensive watercolor paper. Sometimes you just want to practice and have fun and not worry about wasting expensive materials and that's kind of what what I'm doing here. Uh, it's always fun to take a little painting break I think and there's no need for stress or worry when you're doing that. So same techniques for these branches. When I get to the end though I want to um, end with three branches so I've done those two. I'm going to do one in the center Usually when you get to the tip of a branch like that, that's how the branches go. Um, I grabbed my credit card scraper because that's a really great way to add some details in your branches, add those really, really sharp, crisp lines. And all that is is a piece of old gift card that I cut up. And then the um, those little sharp plastic edges are perfect for scribing in those details. And uh, I, I think every watercolor painter should have that in their bag and it's free. Use up a gift card and chop it up and there you go. <laughs> You've got a lifetime supply. Uh, I really like the fullness of this. That's something that I missed on the um, the other cardinal I showed you. I was not happy with the branches. They felt too stiff. Um, I know I just needed to work them with juicier paint and work them a little quicker. So now we are going to do a branch with some berries. And um, I had, on the other cardinal painting, I had done this with a brush and I was having a hard time getting a good circle. So I grabbed a Q-tip, wet it, and then dipped it in the um, the crimson paint and then just dabbed. And I kind of dabbed and wiggled a little bit to make the bigger berries. And then there's some berries off in the distance you'll see right there. I'm just kind of just tapping on for those smaller ones that are further away. That gives me the best result. I've used my fingers before, but I found that if my fingernails are long, then I get a lopsided, um, a lopsided berry. So this works really well with watercolor and it's just a simple Q-tip. Uh, nothing fancy there. And then you could probably start to see those speckles of red that we had put down wet into wet. They just kind of look like berries far off into the distance. And that's what I was really going for there. Uh, you can use this to put as many little accents as you want. Now this brush here is a liner, which basically means it has long skinny bristles and it holds quite a bit of paint. So I can go in and add tiny little branches from here until next Tuesday and I'll have plenty of paint on that brush. And I believe that one was our Royal Aqualon, but many different companies make liner brushes. So I'm giving everything a nice dry at this point so I can layer on top without having to worry about anything uh, moving and grooving around on me. And I decided that I wanted to go back in with my colored pencils. So here I have a Prismacolor white pencil. Now interesting thing about Prismacolors, um, I have Mine are all very old, so I've actually recently purchased um, a small set of the new ones just to see how they compare to the old ones because I have heard a lot of people complaining about their quality going downhill, so I will do a comparison video on that shortly um, so that you'll have that information too. I am using a black colored pencil. I know I hardly ever use black, but I thought this would be really appropriate with the, um, the details on the eye. Instead of using bright white uh, for highlights, I'm actually using a super, super pale blue gray. Um, I feel like it, it gives you an accurate look of the reflection of sunlight because sunlight generally has that uh, more um, kind of cooler uh, bluish light to it. And I am kind of adding some detail on legs, just basically dancing around with these different colors of browns, grays, uh, whites, reds and yellows and I will put a list of the colors that I used in the video description too in case you want to match exactly what I'm using but really just kind of eyeball it I think there are so many shades in Prismacolor pencils that I mean so many are so similar here I'm using an orange pencil just to deepen up the color in the beak 
And the nice thing about like layering your color pencils there for the beak is that you start to build up this texture, this waxy texture that actually looks a lot like uh, the texture of a bird's beak. So it works out really well for that. And um, the other thing I like is that the color pencils are kind of translucent, so you can work on top of the watercolor. You get to retain the beauty of the watercolor, but you get to build like a veil of, um, of an adjustment color on top and you can just kind of brighten up and and keep um, adjusting until you have it exactly the way you like. When I'm working on a painting I generally don't use too many colors. Um, I probably use maybe 10 shades of colored pencil here and I don't know maybe five or six colors of watercolor. Uh, I like to try to keep mixing and layering to get the colors I want. It just is easier to create harmony in a piece than using every color in the box on one painting. But that's up to you. I mean, as long as you use it somewhere else and you balance things out, you can make it work. And I encourage you to experiment and figure out your style. Now, the way I'm shading the bird, especially around the belly, is I'm putting the darker colors on the edge and fading them in towards the center. That just gives the cardinal more of a round tummy and makes him look a little bit more three-dimensional. I'm using a white uh, colored pencil to add a little bit of a soft highlight to each of the little berries, uh, each of the big ones, and then I'm just doing some of the little ones to make it um, a little more realistic. And my, you can see from all that all water I'd used on my paper, my paper's starting to curl up. So I recommend you have a few clips handy, like bulldog clips, or I mean, you can get them binder clips, get them at the Dollar Tree, it doesn't matter. And you can clip down the, uh, the paper while you're working so it doesn't curl on you. And I also like to layer watercolor over colored pencil. I know it's not a customary practice. However, when you do that, you get to s deepen the color and it seeps into the, um, into the cracks between the colored pencil and you just get a very rich, lustrous color color. So I encourage you to try that too. It's a lot of fun. Use your supplies in new ways and see what you come up with. Now I'm going to try something here with a white paint because this watercolor set does come with white as do pretty much all student grade sets. And I'm using a toothbrush to flick on some snow like this. It just started snowing. Now you can't really see in the picture here, but the, um, my toothbrush, my, my painty toothbrush was not very clean. And so my snow was not very white. So I grabbed this spattery tool and, um, um, and it was a present for my friend Rich, the spin doctor. Um, and so I decided to use some paint right out of the tube and spatter that on. And then to remove some from the bergs, I got a little carried away. I'm just using a wet brush and dabbing it with a, a paper towel. And that's pretty easy. And the good thing about using the colored pencil, like especially for the blacks, is that uh, when I went over it with water to clean it up, it um, it didn't lift anything or smear anything. And I'm using a few, um, I'm actually just using a green, dark green colored pencil to add a few more strokes in in the branches to help them be a little crisper and show up a little bit better and then just doing a few more refining details on the bird's body. Now this picture took me about um, 45 minutes to do and I worked on it in several um, stages so I just wanted to let you know that you do not need to do everything in one setting. In fact giving your eyes a chance to rest between painting sessions can help dramatically. Uh, just a reminder I will link everything up in the video description if you're looking for any of these supplies. I want to thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and until next time, happy crafting!